Invasive species. The native species is a kind of organism that has been part of a community for a long time. Species that are brought to a place by humans and become part of the local ecosystem have several names. We refer to them as introduced species. They can also be nonative or exotic species. Introduced species can change the balance of an ecosystem. Not all organisms introduced to a new ecosystem survive, and not all introduced species that survive will have negative effects on native species. But when they do, it can be disastrous. When an introduced species has a negative impact on an ecosystem, it is labeled an invasive species. So how are organisms introduced to new ecosystems? Humans sometimes introduce new species to an ecosystem on purpose. In 1890, 60 European starlings were released into New York Central Park as part of a Shakespeare festival. Without natural predators, the rowdy birds survived and flourished. Today, millions of starlings live in North America and often cause problems by outcompeting native birds for nest spaces. Most invasive species are accidentally introduced to a new ecosystem. Many aquatic invasive species hitched a ride to a new location while attached to the bottom of ships or in the ship's ballast tanks, which are water tanks used to stabilize the ship. Global trading of natural goods such as timber, plants, and pets has allowed many species hidden within the leaves of fur or, or, or fur of the organism to go along for the ride. Impacts of Invasive Species an invasive species can change habitats and alter ecosystem function and ecosystem services. In fact, invasive species are a greater threat to native biodiversity than overhunting, pollution, and disease combined. Interactions with invasive species are the main threat for half of the species in the United States that are at risk of extinction. Invasive species threaten biodiversity and ecosystem services by crowding out or replacing native species, interfering with human activities, such as raising livestock or crops, carrying and transmitting disease, acting as predators or parasites, or changing the existing habitat. Major U.S. Invasive Species Powerful Predators New predators introduced to an ecosystem can dramatically affect the balance of the existing food chain. If they are too successful, they can reduce other populations, perhaps even driving them extinct. That will, in turn, cause other effects throughout the ecosystem. The black rat is native to tropical Asia. Rats hitched rides on ships as long ago as 100 CE and thrived in the growing cities where ships would dock. These predators will eat nearly anything, but particularly enjoyed, enjoy bird and reptile eggs and baby animals. Because of this, rats are believed to have caused the extinction of many bird, reptile, and other small animal species. In addition, fleas living on the rats are able to carry infectious diseases, diseases that can be deadly to humans. The plague transmitted by fleas on rats killed 75 to 200 million people in the 1300s. Free-ranging domestic cats are one of the greatest threats to small mammal and bird biodiversity across the world. In the United States alone, domestic cats kill up to 4 billion birds and 20 billion mammals every year. Recent studies suggest that domestic cats kill more native birds and mammals in the United States than any other human impact, including collision with buildings and cars and hunting by other invasive predators introduced by humans. There's a little cat right there. The northern stakehead fish seems like the perfect invasive predator. Native to the waters of Southeast Asia, this fish will eat anything in its way. It took only a few individuals released into the eastern U.S. watersheds to cause trouble. What makes them so dangerous to freshwater biodiversity is that they can survive outside of the water for several days. 
young fish can travel by wriggling on land to search for a new home. And in addition, each mature female can lay up to 75,000 eggs a year. The brown tree snake was introduced accidentally to the island of Guam through cargo shipments. Interestingly, a 2.5 meter long brown snake survived for almost a year packed in an unsuspecting homeowner's washing machine. Within about 20 years, the introduced snake population eliminated 10 out of 11 bird species native to the forests of Guam. Today, you cannot find a native bird on the island. Lionfish came to the United States from the Western Pacific in the Indian Ocean as aquarium fish. As they grew too large, some owners released them into the Florida coastal waters. With no natural predator and plenty of fish to eat, the lionfish quickly grew. Some areas offer contests in an attempt to encourage lionfish fishing, and marine sanctuaries have asked snorkelers to report lionfish sightings in order to help managers prevent further population growth. Competitors and harassers. Some introduced organisms outcompete native organisms for food or habitat space within the ecosystem. Zebra mussels were accidentally brought to the United States from Russia in the ballasts of ships. Without any natural predators, zebra mussel populations have grown dramatically. The mussels cluster on any underwater surface, clogging pipe systems and costing billions of dollars in damages each year. At least 30 species of native freshwater mussels are threatened with extinction because of competition with the zebra mussel. The ecosystems of the Great Lakes have been significantly changed by zebra mussels. There's a zebra mussel. Kudzu is a climbing vine native to south, southern Japan and southeast China. Its growth is out of control in the southeastern United States. Also known as a mile a minute vine, this fast growing plant was intentionally introduced to help inhibit soil erosion. Without any natural predators, kudzu has literally covered many ecosystems. There's an example of kudzu right there. The North American gray squirrel is a native species of eastern United States deciduous forests. It was transported to Europe by humans, where it made a new home in the European deciduous forests. This squirrel is larger and naturally more aggressive than the native European red squirrels. It's driving them to extinction by outcompeting them for the same food sources. That guy. Microscopic invaders. Organisms that aren't easily visible can be just as dangerous when introduced to a new ecosystem. The chestnut blight fungus came to the United States in the early 1900s on trees imported from Asia. The fungus attacked American chestnut trees wiping out nearly 4 billion trees within 50 years. Less than 100 mature trees are estimated to be alive in the tree's main eastern United States ecosystem. The near extinction of the American chestnut was a disaster for many animals that depended on the tree for habitat or food. Minimizing impacts on biodiversity. The total economic impact of invasive species in the United States is harder to calculate, but costs many billions of dollars in terms of lost crops or produce products and efforts to combat the invasive species. We use three main ways to minimize impacts of invasive species. Prevention. Keeping a known invasive species out of the best strategy, out is the best strategy to protect an ecosystem. Because humans are the main transporters of invasive species, we can reduce this part of the problem with education and regulations. Many boat licenses require owners to clean boats before launching them into new bodies of water. Border customs agents regulate the import of invasive species and material that could carry invisible hitchhikers. Eradication. Once an invasive species has arrived in an ecosystem, the next step is to try to eliminate it before it becomes uncontrollable. 
early efforts can reduce the overall impact on the ecosystem. Sometimes humans introduce organisms that eat or compete with the invasive population. However, introducing another organism can cause even more troubles. One example is the introduction of the Indian mongoose into New Zealand to control invasive rat and opossum populations. Unfortunately, the mongoose preferred hunting the native birds, and today New Zealand has three invasive predators instead of two. Mitigation. Once an invasive species has settled into an ecosystem, humans may need to spend a lot of money to protect the native species, crops, and livestock. So what can you do? You can help support native species in your area. Plant a native garden. Many invasive plants were brought to the United States to make our gardens look like gardens in other places around the world. We can plant instead the so many we can plant instead the many beautiful native plants that provide food and shelter for native animals. Because native plants are well adapted to their ecosystems, they also have no need for excessive watering or pesticides. Practice prevention strategies. Avoid transporting plants, fruit, or animals to new places, especially when signs warn against it. Keep your cat indoors. For most Americans, the most important way they can help protect native biodiversity is to keep the family cat indoors. Studies have found that putting a bell on the cat's collar is not helpful, as most wildlife will not identify the sounds with danger until it is too late. You can also help by supporting your local animal shelter. Many shelters find homes for feral cats, reducing or hunting their activities. They also curb cat populations by spaying female cats. Support habitat restoration projects. You can get involved in projects to help restore natural areas. These project, projects may include working in outdoors, to remove invasive species, to plant more native species, or to remove pollutants. By minimizing human impact on an area, we can give native plants and animals a better chance of surviving.